हेलो एवरीवन मानसी हेयर सो प्रोसीडिंग विद द लास्ट लेक्चर व्हिच वाज अबाउट कंट्रोल स्ट्रक्चर्स नाउ दिस लेक्चर इज अबाउट फंक्शंस इन सी लैंग्वेज दीज आर ऑल द थिंग्स वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस लेसन सो लेट्स प्रोसीड नाउ व्हाट्स अ फंक्शन अ फंक्शन इज अ सेल्फ कंटेन ब्लॉक ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स दैट परफॉर्म सम टास्क व्हिच आर स्पेसिफाइड बाय अस Now, if we divide some large C program into some blocks, which can be thought of as some basic building blocks for that particular program, so these particular blocks of codes are called as functions, which means that a collection of these basic building blocks creates a function, and collection of these functions creates a C program. Now, if we model this concept of using function as some real life situation, so it would be like hiring a person to do a specific job for you. Sometimes it's really going to be easy to interact with that person, and sometimes it's going to be really complex. But why do we need functions? I mean, why do we use them? Because C functions can be used to avoid rewriting same code again and again in a program. Because it might be possible that you need to write same set of codes several times in your program. So just imagine how time-consuming would it be to write the set of code a hundred times in the same program. It will no just it will not only increase your typing efforts. but it will also increase the size of your of your program which will increase the compile time run time and will ultimately make your program slower and messy and unattractable which will make your program a bug prone application there are going to be a lot of errors which you can't even solve properly because it your program would just become a pool of mess to so to avoid such bugs and errors and to this messy situation we use c functions Now moving on we have types of functions so basically we have two types of functions one is library or predefined function and another one is user defined functions so let us laugh at them one by one so the first one library functions or we can call them as predefined functions now these functions are inbuilt functions which are grouped together and placed in a common place called a library and we need to include these standard libraries positively in our programs if we want if we want to use those inbuilt functions so all standard c libraries uh, i mean all c standard library functions are declared in header files which are saved as file name .h and we need to include these header files in our c program by using include hash uh, uh, brackets file name .h bracket close this command so there are some header files which can be used to uh inbuilt fun to use inbuilt function with respect to our code some are stdio.h conio.h string or this they have different different functions according to their uh, so so we use them according to our requirement basically these printf scanf and such command types of command these are all predefined in these libraries and that's why we include this stdio.h header file in every c program and fun fact it is mandatory to include one function in our c program because we use it every time every time and without that our program won't even compile and that function is the main function and that's why it's necessary next is user defined functions the user defined functions are the functions which are written by us for our own requirement we can also add the our user defined functions in our c libraries but we aren't going to discuss that we are just going to create user defined functions and learn its concept on how to use them in our c programs now moving on with the concepts look at the syntax here it's for declaring a function now what does a declaration do it simply informs the compiler about the function name function parameters and the return values data type so according to this syntax we first need to specify the return type then the desired function name and then all the arguments to be passed with this now look at this syntax here this this syntax is for defining so what does definition have in it it just contains all the statements that are to be executed in the program now let us understand these with the help of an example so what is happening in this program is that firstly this program begins with the only necessary file the uh, that is the include stdio.h next is the proto pro, next is a prototype that is the declaration 
of this function and oh don't forget that semicolon after this statements because if you don't put your semicolon you can find some errors next this main function returns an integer which you should also always have to conform to the standard next this printf command here is actually taking the value of what appears to be the mult function now what is really happening is printf is accepting the value returned by mult and not by the mult itself the result would be the same as if uh, we had used this print command earlier so this mult function is actually defined below main because its declaration is above main so the compiler still recognizes it as being declared and so the compiler will not give an error about mult being undeclared as long as the declaration is present a function can be used even if there is no definition but the code cannot run without a definition even though it will compile so prototypes are the declarations of the function but they are only necessary to alert the compiler about the existence of a function if we don't want to go ahead and fully define the function now return is the keyword which is used to force the function to return a value it can be used to exit the function before the end of the function now we have actually mentioned this word parameters a couple of times now so what are these parameters are an integral part of programming so to get started there are two types of parameters or we can say arguments which we use in our programs actual parameters and formal parameters so actual parameters are the arguments which are used in calling of a function and formal parameters or the arguments are the arguments which are used in function definition and these parameters are used pretty extensively in our programs so it's good to know the difference between the actual and formal arguments so moving on let us see how we can call these functions in a program we can call a function by two ways either by call by value or by call by reference method so let's elaborate them one by one but before that this is a general syntax for calling a function first we need to put a function name and then the argument list so the first one call by value this is the default way of calling a function in c because you just need to directly pass the value in order to call it so the value of the variable is passed to the function as parameter because the value of the actual parameter cannot be modified by formal par parameter and different memory is allocated for both actual and formal parameters because value of actual parameter is copied to formal parameter let us clear this with the help of an example so in this program the values of the variable m and n are passed to the function swap these values are copied to for formal arguments a and b that means m and n are the actual parameters and a and b are the formal parameters so you can also try running this program in your pieces and confirm the output next is call by reference in call by reference method the address of the variable is passed to the function of as parameter the value of the actual parameter can be modified by formal parameter and same memory is used for both actual and formal parameters since only address is used for uh, by both parameters so here address is the most important phenomena without it you can not use call by reference method for example in this program the address of the variables m and n are passed by the function swap these values are not copied to formal parameters a and b in swap function because they are just holding the address of those variables this address is used to access and change the values of the variables so as said address needs to be passed and it is a key to use the call by reference method now all c functions can be called either by arguments or without arguments in a c program these functions may or may not return values to the calling function now there are four cases which can occur when we talk about functions with return values and functions first is c function with arguments uh, and with return value second is c functions with arguments and without return value third is c functions with 
without arguments and without return value and the case 4 is c functions without arguments and with return value we'll discuss these in the next video